A Streak of Blue, written and narrated by the Barrier Truck. Thomas and Edward gave splendid effort building the railroad, but they weren't suited for fast mainline services. As such, the fact director another Although a good story, he was prone to steaming troubles, which caused endless frustration. Due to a lack of funds, engines were loaned from other railways. One of these, known only as seven five four six, fancied himself the savior of the line. Never failed to make the line. No longer, everybody, he declared, dragging Henry and his train into the big station. For I have restored order to our timetable once more. Did you have the time of all that caught in his boiler? Thomas remarked to Edward. I say, you little one, be a good laddie. Take my coaches and the <coughs> in disposal away. I must rest my aching wheels. Evidently not, murmured Edward. As Thomas buttered up, Henry couldn't even meet his gaze. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, baby. He should be sorry, retorted Thomas. One day, who then he is. That night, Thomas retired to the shed. A vulgar discourse greeted him. You know... 87546 said loudly to another loaned engine. I do sympathize with the fat director. Wasted on little hard-earned money he had on a tiny little mite, an antique, and an invalid. He looked across to Henry, sleeping as workmen tried to mend him. I am the real bargain. The strength for free for the coal and water consumption of one. No only a matter of time before he purchases me. <laughs> the fat director, Edward interjected, favors engines with good character. You leave much to present in that department. And where has good character left you? <laughs> Certainly not the main line. Speed and strength for all that matters there. When I pull coaches, you nearly see a streak of blue. Old engines like you fade into the background. I like to see you do my work without falling to pieces already. Ha! <laughs> he turned back to the other engine. Now, a more pressing matter. When I am purchased, what do you suppose that my proper name should be? I was thinking about something Gregory, or even better, Sir Lord Gregory has a certain charm to it. Thomas was about to retort, but Edward gave him a look. Save you theme for later. It's no use arguing with him. They stared at the loaned engine with contempt. The next morning, 87546 awoke to a startling sight. There was Henry, hissing and weeshing, halfway on the turntable. 
What the devil is this? Ooty, or is the man have made me better? <coughs> well, get better and answer my way this very instant. My merry passengers are waiting for me. I demand extra vacation at once. But the other engines had all left for work. They couldn't have helped anyhow, for there was no way onto the turntable. Worse and worse, the fat director scowled as he paced the platform. The passengers cannot be kept waiting. I'm sorry, Edward. As the others have gone, you'll have to take their coaches. Edward gulped, staring at the long train. Beg your pardon, sir. But this is a beyond dream of my confidence. Bubbled Thomas, shuffling alongside. Do you think you're going to get one, sir? Besides, the others can manage their own shunting for a while. Very well. Off you go. Do your best, but take care. The engines backed excitedly onto the train. The passengers marveled at the strange combination, but were thankful to have any train at all. Come on, come on, come on, called Thomas. Steady now, steady now, advised Edward. Soon they were on the main line having a wonderful time. Thomas was so excited to leave the yard, he nearly pulled Edward's coupling off. Edward jumped. He was glad to stretch his wheels again. The two engines worked so well, the coaches felt light as air. Other engines were shocked as they raced past him, whistling and bleeding. Station, exhausted but triumphant. Well, well, well. Our streak of blue has returned, and in one piece, no less. 87546 scowled as the happy passengers swarmed out of the coaches. What splendid little engines you are! Your director must be proud of you. He's very happy with his purchase, indeed. Oh, ha ha! You were only allowed out of the yard because clanky old Iron Edward couldn't manage it alone. Enjoy your brief moment. It's already starting to fade into the background. <laughs> if I 
didn't know any better. He didn't like he shot in his own train. Shortled off to the water park. Are you alright, Henry? What on earth happened this morning? Oh, the usual steam, troubles, you know how it is. Miraculously, the problem seems to vanish after you gone. <gasps> you did it? Now, Edward, do you really think I really do such a thing? And without another word, Henry steamed away. 